Aloha teachers! Right now we're going to take a look at creating a new gradebook in Easy Grade Pro for the new year and setting up classes and configuring it for online grades. To create a new gradebook you'll open Easy Grade Pro. Some of you may have an icon on the desktop. Uh, if not, you may have an icon here or for most of you, you may have to go to all programs and look through that list until you find a folder for Easy Grade Pro and then choose it from there. So we'll open Easy Grade Pro. You'll notice we're using version 4.0 this year. It's a newer version. Most functions are almost exactly the same. The slight differences we'll try and cover right now. To create a new gradebook, we'll click on that button. And this brings up the Save New Gradebook window. And the first thing we'll do is choose where to save the gradebook. By default, it chooses the Easy Grade Pro folder, which can be difficult to find. So I recommend either My Documents, or in this case, the easiest to find will be Desktop. Then we give the gradebook a name, and I generally recommend to put your name and leave the year to differentiate it from previous gradebooks, and then click Save, save to create the gradebook. First thing it wants us to do is to add new classes in this empty gradebook. So that's what we'll do by clicking the Add Classes button. Before we get started in actually adding the class information, we need to change the first four custom labels to help us be able to input this stuff into online grades. So you see we replace those four custom labels with course code, course name, section number, and period. That is important. If you don't do that, you wouldn't be able to upload the information into online grades. So now that we've got that done, we can go ahead and enter the class information. The first thing we want to do is give it a name. You'll notice I put the period first. I think that helps us to sort and easily see what class we're working with. But you can name this anything you want. Uh, often the name that's commonly called is the easiest. Then we want to go ahead and put the course code. Now this comes from ESIS. So we would need to go into ESIS or take a look at our class list or something to see what that course code is. In ESIS, if you look here on your main teacher assistant page, the course codes are in this far left column. Right next to them is the section numbers, and we're going to use section numbers as well. Uh, it may be easiest to copy. If we highlight this and control C as in Charlie, we'll copy. And I know that this period three has section zero one, so I'll just enter that manually and we'll go back over to Easy Grade Pro. And I go to that course code field and I'm going to paste control V as in Victor and that pastes the course code. Course name, I can put whatever it's commonly called. This doesn't have to be from ESIS like the course code does. Section number, we remember in ESIS it was 01. Please use a two digit section number to avoid confusion for in online grades and then the period just needs to be the one digit period number. Now, Some of you may have several courses that are in one period and you're going to grade them all the same. If that's the case just choose the course code from ESIS that has the most students in it and then you can add all the students into that same course code. Now we have the class information. The last thing we need to do is choose the term. Since it's the first of the year, we'll choose term one. After that, if we had more classes to enter, we could go ahead and click on next class and go through the same steps to do our other periods. And when we're finished, go ahead and click on done to finish the class. Now to double check and make sure that the class is in there, we can go up here to our class selection field and choose a class and we see there's period three, government, 
and we choose that. The first thing that comes up is about class options. Most of you can probably just go ahead and click cancel. If you wanted to, you can view and edit those cl class options. Um, you'll notice there's things with scales, rubrics, different categories, footnotes, scoring. I'm not going to go into those right now, but those options are there. When you're done setting up the class options, you could go ahead and click done. It then asks us for student names. At this moment, we are not going to enter student names. We, are, we will be able to import those from ESIS later, and that's covered in a different instructional video. So right now, we're just going to go ahead and click Cancel. And the next thing we're going to look at is how do we take this gradebook and configure it for online grades? What we can do is there's a couple ways to look at that. There's an icon with an at symbol right here, and you'll notice it says Internet. I could click there, or to get to the same screen, I can click on File and Email slash Internet. And this will bring up a new window, and it says Action, Choose an Action. It may, by default, put something else in there, but you'll want to choose Create a Basmati File. Some of you may remember Basmati from online grades last year. This looks a little different, but it's the same basic process. Once we've chosen create a Basmati file, then we choose, okay, what are we creating it for? Choose all classes in the term. You could do one class at a time, but generally it's easier to do all classes in the term. Now down at the bottom it shows the classes. In this case we only have one class entered, but it would show all the classes that it was going to create the file for. Um, what we'll want to do is choose this Options tab and enter some information. We'll only have to do this once, and then after that it will automatically be entered. Here we're choosing the options for the Basmati file. Course number, it's already chosen the right um, custom field for us, which is Course Code. Section number, we'll need to change that and choose Class Custom 3, the section number. Period, we'll change that to the custom four. Students will leave to all students. Assignments, all assignments. Now this part's important. Your teacher name makes sense. You just enter your teacher name. Here's where it gets a little confusing. Teacher email. Don't enter your email information. Instead you'll want to enter your username for online grades. Now if you don't know what that is, uh, check with Mr. Anderson and he can help you out. Um, but for most people it's the same uh, username that you use in ESIS. So not your email address but your username for online grades. The next one's a little confusing too. It says teacher ID. You don't enter an ID. This is where you actually enter your password for online grades. I'll say that again, password for online grades. So those two are a little confusing, but once you enter them once, you won't have to worry about it again. Phone number and controls, you can just leave blank. Now, what we've done here is we've set EasyGrade Pro up. We've configured it so that you can use it with online grades. Now that it's configured, we can go ahead and click cancel and it'll keep all those settings. And if we wanted to, we could just take a look here and go back to that internet and you'll notice that everything we just put in there is already there so we wouldn't have to enter it again. So we'll cancel back out and now our gradebook has our classes, in this case just one, but we could have entered all our classes, and it's all set up to be used with online grades. The next step would be to import all the student information that we get out of ESIS, and you can look to the other uh, instructions and videos to see how to do that.